Today's video is about training, resistance training in a fasted state, how it's effective at localized muscle growth, localized muscle preservation, but we're also gonna to touch on when you should break your fast after resistance training, how long you should wait after your resistance training in a fasted state before you eat to get the optimal result. So in yesterday's video, we talked about muscle protein breakdown and how it increases during a fast. Okay, simply because your body is breaking down protein, but it doesn't mean that that protein is just vanishing into thin air. It's getting reallocated to other areas. So it might be coming from the muscle, but then it's going over to the intestines or going over to your skin to repair proteins there. So I likened it to Robin Hood. Your body borrows from the area or steals from the muscle that's a little bit weaker, weak cells or weak muscle fibers that aren't really contributing to life, takes them, puts them to a place that needs the extra boost. And then after you eat your protein, after you break your fast and get good quality nutrients in, then those muscle proteins are repaired in a much better way. So we talked about how people that intermittent fast tend to have good quality muscle, at least what I've noticed, at least from somewhat of an anecdotal state, right? So today we're talking about how you should orient your workout a little bit more, but more so how lifting weights in a fasted state is beneficial in terms of preserving your muscle during a fast. So we'll break it all down, it's really fun stuff please do hit that red subscribe button if you're interested in learning all kinds of stuff about fasting, intermittent fasting, extreme fasting, whatever. And also turn that little bell notification to all notifications. That way you never miss a beat. And remember, this is for informational purposes only. I'm just some guy on the internet and I just lost 100 pounds and I know some biochemistry. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna recap one other thing. When we're fasting, we have an increase in ketones. Ketones are muscle sparing because they increase the availability of leucine. When you're in a fasted state, even if it's a relatively short fast, your body is preferentially using fat. It's not trying to burn muscle. So we're not just like walking around afraid that every move we make is gonna break down muscle, okay? We don't wanna think like that. So let's take a look at a little bit of science. One study that was published in the journal Scientific Reports took a look at resistance training and it looked at mTOR, which is the master anabolic switch. And it found that upon resistance training, there was a massive, just really quick, rapid, translocation of mTOR to the cell membrane. What that means is mTOR, muscle building activation, was quickly turned on as mTOR came to the cell membrane so it could get phosphorylated. That means as soon as you touch a weight, you have some potential to be building muscle. Your body gets into that mode. Even if you're in a fasted state, What's really interesting is that mTOR remains elevated at that muscular level for 24 hours. Even if you're in a fasted state and other areas of your body might be in more of an autophagic situation where they have more autophagy and they're recycling. So muscle can operate somewhat independently, at least it seems so. We typically think that even after an overnight fast, if we're going to work out in the morning in a fasted state, that we should be replenishing our protein right after that workout. Because it, again, it makes sense. All the stuff we've seen before has told us that if you work out, then you're breaking down protein, you need to repair that immediately. Well, there's some other science that really doesn't say that, especially in people that fast relatively frequently. Weight training actually helps you preserve muscle if you do things right. We just have to know the timing and when to break the fast too. So there's a study that was published in Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise. Okay, it wanted to investigate overnight fasting, so it took a look at two groups. Both groups fasted overnight, and one group was a control group, and one group was a resistance training group that did 50 minutes of moderate to intense resistance training, not cardio, resistance training. Okay, and they wanted to look at net protein breakdown. Well, of course, there was some net protein breakdown, right? They broke down protein during their workout. But what was really interesting is that protein breakdown reached its peak at 195 minutes, three and a half hours after the workout. But what else is interesting is muscle protein synthesis increased at 195 minutes or three and a half hours after the workout. That's wild. In fact, muscle protein breakdown increased 17% and muscle protein synthesis increased 21%. So the synthesis increased more than the breakdown in a fasted state telling us that we had a reallocation of amino acids that were actually preserving the muscle and keeping synthesis there, okay? So it comes down to making sure that you're consuming enough protein in your fed state to support that. Now, what's really interesting about this study is there was not much of an increase in breakdown and not much of an increase in synthesis at 60 minutes post-workout. What the heck? So what that implies is that during the workout, the body was utilizing amino acids as some source of fuel along with the fats, right? 
but then later on, after the dust had settled from the workout, then the demand actually started. So point is, is you can get more out of your fast if you work out because it's going to preserve the muscle and then allow yourself to have three or three and a half hours before you actually eat because that is when your muscle protein breakdown and muscle protein synthesis are at its height. Remember, the breakdown is critical. The muscle protein breakdown is what triggers the muscle protein synthesis, okay? So again, if you're looking for something to break a fast with, this is where I would usually recommend really lean kind of meat. So I put a link down below for ButcherBox. I talk about them in all my videos. They're a big supporter of this channel, so you can get your meat delivered right to your doorstep, super convenient, very, very easy, much easier than going to the grocery store in my opinion. Uh, grass-fed, grass-finished lean beef, they've got salmon, they've got everything you could imagine. They've got chicken, they've got turkey. It's really awesome stuff. So please do check them out down below in the description. There's a special link if you want to utilize them. Perfect fast-breaking strategy. When you're working out, you are going to start utilizing a little bit of protein for fuel. Okay, it goes through gluconeogenesis. That's not something to be afraid of. Okay, your body is again going to take the weaker parts of protein always first, okay? But you're essentially, you might not officially be in ketosis if it's a shorter fast, but you are predominantly using fats as your fuel source at this point, okay? So whether it's resistance training or whether it's cardio, your body is still going to use a lot of fats because that's the mechanism that you are in at that point in time. So again, we have to come back to what I talked about a little bit yesterday, which is why would your body want to burn something that yields so much less calories, like protein, when it has fat and ketones readily available? That's our body's natural protective mechanism. So what we're trying to accomplish here is letting the body go through its autophagy and cleansing and that whole process, while simultaneously in a parallel world, keeping tension on the muscle and resistance training with minimal cardio so that we can get that overall mTOR effect. Now, not to say cardio during a fast is bad. We can go down that rabbit hole for sure, but I'm just saying if your goal is muscle preservation, touching some weights for 30 to 40 minutes is going to be very, very, very effective. Another thing, and I don't wanna to go too far on a tangent, but I wanna give you some little tidbits. Start looking into what is called blood flow restriction training, BFR training. It allows you to get much more of a lactic acid effect, that lactate effect, which could allow more mTOR signaling and a localized area. So BFR is where you put those cuffs around and you train in a very localized way. If you're again, you're looking at muscle preservation, but you still want the benefits of fasting, it's something to consider. I'm gonna end you with this one thought that you just wanna remember, okay? Fasting is going to turn down mTOR globally, your whole body, but that doesn't mean that you cannot activate it at the muscular level as long as there's tension. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.